In this video, I am going to show you how to quickly fill out the Georgia PT-311-A tax appeals form. A disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, appraiser, or representative for any Georgia tax assessor's office. This video should not be considered official legal, financial, or professional advice. If you need official legal, financial, or professional advice, you should hire a professional to discuss your situation. I am only providing general information based on my personal research, experiences, and opinions. Contact your local tax assessor's office for official, county-specific information. I'm creating this video specifically for property owners who are running up against the tax appeal deadline and don't have enough time to gather the supporting documents. This is a no frills video for the specific purpose of simply filling out the form so that you can preserve your tax appeal rights. The first thing you have to do is go visit your county tax assessor's website and download a copy of the Georgia PT-311-A tax appeals form. If you own multiple properties in different Georgia counties, you will have to visit each county's tax assessor's website and download their specific version of the Georgia PT-311-A tax appeal form. Now, if you happen to be dealing with a county that doesn't provide the basic tax appeal form, what you'll need to do is call the office and have them email a copy to you, or you may have to physically drop by the tax assessor's office and pick up a copy. The basic Georgia tax appeal form, the Georgia PT-311-A form, should look something similar to what I'm showing to you on screen. Generally speaking, when you download a copy of the Georgia tax appeal form, it will be in a PDF file format. Now, I do want to make you aware that some Georgia counties do customize their Georgia tax appeal form. You want to be prepared for it just in case you run into it. And I want to show you some samples of the variations of the basic Georgia tax appeal form. Here's a copy of Cobb County's tax appeal form. The next sample I want to show you is a copy of Chatham County's tax appeal form. The next example I want to show you is a copy of Cherokee County's tax appeal form. And by far the most radical variation of the Georgia tax appeal form that I've seen is the one used in DeKalb County. However, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use the generic Georgia PT-311-A tax appeal form. The basic Georgia appeal form is the one used by most of the counties that I've seen. And this is what you need to fill out the basic form. First of all, you'll want to fill in the tax year. In this case, it's 2021. Where it says name, you want to put the property owner's name there. The name can be an individual's name, an LLC, a trust, or a corporation, for example. The address that you want to use in the address field is the property owner's mailing address there. There are many property owners who will not want to use the property address as their mailing address. In my particular case, I like to have all of my tax appeal mail go to a P.O. box. In the city, state, and zip fields, you'll want to use the mailing address city, state, and zip. In the fields where there's home phone number, work phone, and email address, I think that's self-explanatory. In the next section, you're going to want to check off the real box. The real box means real estate. In the property ID number, you can find that off of your PT-306 annual assessment form. You look up that number and fill it into that field. Now, in the property description, if you go back to the PT-306 annual assessment form, they do have a value. However, that property description that they provide doesn't really mean a whole lot to most of us. So my preference is to put in the property street address there. But that's my own choice in the tax appeals that I do for myself and others. The account number, I think, is largely optional. However, if there's an account number, you will find that in the PT-306 annual assessment form. For most people who specify the grounds for appeal, you're probably going to be checking off the value box. In some special cases, you may want to check off some of the other boxes, depending on your individual situation. For most people who are simply appealing the value of their property, you will want to check off the BOE option, the Board of Equalization. In the Owner's Value Assertion box, you'll want to put in the value of what you think the property should be valued at. Sometimes it can be a challenge to put in a value in the box. 
If there is some doubt as to what value you should put in that values box, I tend to put in a lower number than a higher number. But it's your appeal, so ultimately you'll have to make your best guess. In the property owner comments section, you only get two lines. So you're not going to be able to write anything very substantial here except some quick notes. I generally don't like to leave it blank. Even in a bare bones submission, I usually like to make a couple of comments about the current condition, the defects, deficiencies, or references to sales comps. Because we're only focused on filling out the tax appeal form and getting it into the tax appeals office, you will want to mention that you will be providing additional supporting documents later. For most people watching this video, the property class that you're going to be checking off is the residential box. However, if you're dealing with a commercial, industrial, or agricultural property, check the box that's applicable to your property. And finally, this is very important, you'll want to sign the tax appeal form, preferably with a blue pen. The reason why I recommend a blue pen is that sometimes signatures with black pens come across as not being an original signature. And quite frankly, you don't need that hassle of whether or not you made an original signature. And finally, you'll want to write in the date of when you signed the tax appeal form. And for most of you watching this video, that's it. Once you've completed filling out your Georgia tax appeal form, you're either going to have to send it in or walk it in. If you send it in, you'll want to send it in through U.S. mail. If you've got time to spare, you can put first class postage stamp on it and send it. Then call a few days later and follow up. If you don't have time to spare, you may want to consider sending in your appeal form via priority mail or certified mail. If you do walk it in and hand deliver it in person, make sure the clerk time stamps your tax appeal form and you get a copy of it. In years past, I never worried much about sending my appeal form via U.S. mail because they generally received it within two or three business days. However, now with the U.S. mail being much slower, I do worry about it a little bit more. And that's something you're going to have to consider if you decide to mail it in. However, the tax assessor's office receives your completed tax appeal form. Once they've even put it into your system, you can be assured that your tax appeal rights have been preserved. Going forward, you can then spend the time to gather the supporting documents you need for a successful tax appeal. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And while you're at it, take a look at these videos that I've recommended for you. Again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video.